for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. Dear brethren, in our previous service, we began a very good series that will certainly help us learn a lot about God. And when we learn about God, we see more clearly. If we don't learn, we trip and fall a lot because we are not walking the good path. The good path is very beautiful. The good path is a path that will never ever lead you to sorrow, brethren. On the good path, everything that is good will happen to you because God protects us. But if we choose to walk the evil path, we are following the devil down the path that he has sown. And the evil path will only lead to hardship and sorrow. The good path is able to heal our maladies and solve our problems because the Bible says the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Before you make a decision, but you have to really mean it because a person who doesn't make a decision for Jesus with all of their heart, they are playing with their fate. This person is playing with fire. They are putting their life in great danger. And certainly this person will face many problems in their life. However, when a person belongs to Jesus, they say, Lord, it's part of your covenant. You promised. You said this and that, and I'm going to seek my blessing. I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to talk about this, about clinging to what you have learned from the Word of God. Today we are going to start with the book of, of Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 2. This passage seems to be a simple statement, but it's not. It contains an important revelation from God to us. When Jesus healed the paralytic in Capernaum, and you are probably familiar with this passage, but I want to talk about verse number two. Listen to what it says. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. So brethren, here's the deal. This man was a paralytic. He couldn't move, he couldn't walk. And Jesus was in this house in Capernaum. The house was full of people. Several people were watching him and they felt the Lord God. Sometimes God speaks to an individual and sometimes he speaks to a group of people. And when God speaks, brethren, you can be sure of one thing. There is a great blessing in that which God has said. So they looked at each other and went out because they already knew what to do. Let's bring our friend to Jesus. And they convinced the man and brought him lying on a bed. There were probably other people helping because he was carried by four, uh, by four men. But what exactly does the Bible say? So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought him a paralytic lying on a bed. Now let's go to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 2. Please turn to Mark now because this is an important revelation. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. They went to Jesus, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. But maybe not. The passage implies it was a group. So whenever God speaks, he will do his work. And what did they do? The house was full, so they went through the roof, opened a hole, and lowered the paralytic. And so when Jesus saw their faith, this is very important, it's essential that Jesus sees your faith. Jesus has to see your faith in action. It's useless to believe you have enormous faith, and whenever you want, you can just make things work for you. Put your faith into action. When Jesus sees your faith, everything changes. He saw their faith and said to them, My son, your sins are, are forgiven you. This is the first requirement for your life to go back to normal. If you have a sin in your life, and who doesn't have them, especially those who haven't heard the word of God, but many who have heard are even worse than those who haven't. They returned, like Peter said, a dog returns to his own vomit. So brethren, if Jesus isn't able to forgive your sins, God will not do his work in your life. And when he sees faith, he forgives. The faith of those four people paid close attention when Jesus saw their faith, says the verse, and also the paralytic's faith. He wouldn't allow the other to carry him if he had no faith. And he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. He didn't see only the paralytic's faith. Let's read what Matthew says once again, because we need to understand thoroughly what the Bible says. When Jesus saw their faith, he didn't see only the paralytic's faith. He said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. Ah, wouldn't it be nice if the whole church, all the people of God would stick together, clinging to the word of God, 
and with faith, showing their faith, putting their faith into action, Jesus would forgive sons every single day. People would raise up and would heal the sick. Jesus would guide people's steps. In that church, there wouldn't be people lacking things. There wouldn't be sinners. There wouldn't be young people doing drugs. There wouldn't be children going astray. There wouldn't be couples getting divorced. There wouldn't be anything wrong. It would be a living church. Oh, but where is this church, Dr. Suarez? It's here. We have to build this church. It's my duty to build it up. It's your duty, too. It's our duty as Christians. So Jesus said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Then people started talking to each other, and Jesus said, You're mistaken, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say, Son, take up your bed, arise now, and go to your house. And the man arose. He took up his bed and departed. Everyone there was amazed. Brethren, perhaps you are having trouble with your public life or social, or in your financial life, or in your family life, you're paralytic. Dr. Suarez, I really don't like people. I don't like socializing. People are hypocrites. People are mean. The wicked one is really convincing you. I think there are so many good people out there. There are wonderful people out there. Those who are not, let's help them become good because that's what Jesus does. So Jesus, after seeing their faith, told the man to arise, take up his bed, and go to his house. Jesus will command all those who are socially paralyzed, financially paralyzed, family-wise paralyzed, those who are unsuccessful in life, arise, take up their beds, and go home. And I hope Jesus does the same for you today. Amen? Now we're going to see, folks, what did, what did Jacob do when the Lord God spoke to him, and later his attitude was very important for the outcome. Jacob was going to the land of Abraham because there was a problem between Jacob and his brother Esau, who had sold his birthright of his brother, once sold, always sold. But later he regretted it, and he sought forgiveness but didn't receive it, and he swore to kill Jacob. But it really wasn't Jacob's fault because the birthright belonged to him through sale. Esau asked for a plate of lentil stew and closed the deal and that was it. And later on, Jacob was leaving in order to flee from his brother, obeying his father. So here in chapter 28 in the book of Genesis, beginning with verse number 10, we are going to see that the Lord God met Jacob. Let's take a look at what happened. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This entire passage is important, but verse 15 contains a promise that is simply remarkable. It says, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Jacob left. Years went by. Jacob fell in love with Rachel, 
He worked seven years to get her, but the father of Rachel, who was the uncle of Jacob, deceived his own nephew and gave Leah, his eldest, instead of Rachel, but Jacob complained. No, but you have to work another seven years, so he did. And Leah bore him children. Then Jacob felt it was time for him to go back to his land. He clung to the Lord's promise. When he was returning, some people came up to him and said, Jacob, this is serious. Your brother Esau is coming with an army of 400 men. His brother was violent. And Jacob knew that Esau had promised to kill him. So he had a very serious problem. It's like a person who goes to the doctor and hears him say it's cancer. And this cancer is going to kill you. There's no treatment. And the tumor has spread. It's metastasis. It has taken over your body. There is no treatment. But brethren, Jesus said, pay attention to this. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This is the word of God, brethren. You have to take hold of this word. And that's what Jacob did. So then let's see what happened next. Here in chapter 32, verse 22, Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. It was a stream. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go, unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, not Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So what exactly happened here? When the Lord God said, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, that was the Lord speaking, and Jacob took hold of the word of God. It is very important that when you come to this service, you pay attention to the message without talking to the person next to you. Pay attention to the word. When the word of God speaks to your heart and you understand it, take hold of this word. And when a problem comes up, perhaps it's a very serious disease. Or maybe it's a problem that's impossible to be solved. What is it that you have to do? You must come into the Lord's presence and speak to him. You gave me your word, Lord. You said my life would be preserved. You said you were going to do that. Lord God, I am here to receive that which belongs to me. God was in the hands of Jacob. When he made that promise, that angel was God's promise and was God himself right next to Jacob. Brethren, when the Lord makes you a promise, the day that you understand that, God's angel, the promise of the Lord, the Lord God himself is standing right by your side. And if there is a battle during your prayer and you are, you are struggling, it seems like you're not going to win, you must hold on to it. You must repeat, Lord, you cannot leave me. I will not let you go. You have spoken to me. I didn't make this up. 
Your word has spoken to my heart. I was young at the time. I remember the day. You revealed your word to me, and I understood it. Lord, I will not accept anything else. I will not let go. You must keep your word. Lord, this is your promise. When the Lord wrestled with Jacob, for us, this is symbolic. Jacob's faith grew stronger. It's true that Jacob lived before the Calvary, and he started limping on his hip. There is a verse here which says that. Let's read that. Just as he crossed over Penu, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket. He's talking about goats, which happens until today, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. After wrestling with God, Jacob started limping. He limped on his hip, but Jacob received his blessing. Today, God is not going to make anyone leave this place limping because Jesus has already attained our blessing. Today, the Calvary has already taken place. Everything that God has is ours. His name is ours for us to fight and win. Let's say you're not able to make a living with your salary. You have to wrestle with God. You have to speak to God. Are you currently having trouble with the person that you love or that you think you love because sometimes the problem is you? You have to speak to God. He is going to show you. If you're not managing to survive, the problem is serious. Lord, where is your promise when you spoke to my heart? but I don't have a promise. Then you are not living in the presence of God. Live in His presence. Come to church regularly. Be a person who seeks everything in the Word of God. When you hear the Lord God speak to your spirit, when you understand His promise, when you are sure of it, you are going to shed a lot of tears and you're going to say, Lord, you have changed my life because now I know if a problem comes up in my life, I know how to resolve it. You must not live away from the presence of God. You must be in his presence every moment of the day. Wherever Jacob went, God was with him, preserving his life. He said, I will preserve your life. God did not allow Jacob to be hurt in a strange land. When his own father-in-law tried to do evil to him, he was unable to do it. His father-in-law wanted everything. Jacob prayed and God gave him inspiration. That's okay, I'm taking care of your flocks. The speckled shall be my wages, and all the flocks bore speckled. His father-in-law said, You are cheating. From now on, all the streaks shall be your wages, and all those without streaks shall be mine. And Jacob grew stronger. How is it that God did that? God gave him inspiration. Where the flocks came to drink water, Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and peeled white stripes in them. He set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the gutters, and they mated by the rods. It was God who taught Jacob how to do that. I mean, how could anyone think of doing that on their own? So Jacob became wealthy because God was with him all the time. But now the threat is very serious. Esau is a violent man. Esau is a hunter. He is very used to going into the woods and taking his prey with his own hands. And he is coming with 400 armed men to kill you. What happened to Jacob? That which has always happened. The Lord God was going to fight for him. When he wrestled with God and the angel of the Lord, who was God himself, blessed Jacob, Esau had a change of heart. Esau saw Jacob, and they both cried and hugged each other, and then they made up. Brethren, this is a promise for all of us. We must continue to seek for the fulfilling of this promise in our lives. We must not, by any means, at the time that we are wrestling, but Lord, you did not heal me, you had promised. No, Lord, this is serious now. I am here as a real warrior. You were not kidding me that day when you spoke to me. I left idolatry, I left witchcraft, I gave up prostitution, I stopped tricking others, and it was good that I did, because you have called me. And you have not called me to put me to shame. You have called me to give me the victory. But I am not being victorious. Right now I am struggling. Now I am fighting many battles. Lord, Lord, please remember what you said to me because I haven't forgotten it. God is in your hands. Jacob wrestled with an angel. He struggled with men. He struggled with God and he prevailed as he prevailed over men. And the moment when Jacob prevailed over God, God made Jacob prevail over all men. Esau and his 400 men, they understood that Jacob was different, that Jacob had God's blessing. No one spoke another word, and Jacob remained with God's blessing. You, Jacob, who is listening to me, will you remain in God's blessing? Will you let the Lord God go, my brethren? 
Will you, Jacob, stand right there, all dressed up, dancing, without limping on your hip? No, we Christians limp on our hips, but not in the physical sense. We have a mark from God on us. I don't know exactly where it is located, but we also have this promise. I will preserve your life, Jacob. And Jacob believed he was preserved. I will go with you and I will bring you back to this land that I am giving you. Glory to God. That which the Lord has spoken to your heart, you must pray about that. You must cry out to the Lord God. You must speak to the Lord God yourself. This is your life. It is you entering God's presence and God dwelling within you. Amen. Now I'd like to pray, brethren, for everyone who has a problem in their arms. These days, the Lord God is healing so many arms. Dr. Suarez, I have a problem. I feel sharp pain and I cannot lift my arm. Who of you has a problem in your arm from the shoulder to the tip of the fingers? Do this. Raise your hand if you have something wrong with your arm. Could you please come forward because I want to pray for God's blessing? Come forward now in the name of Jesus. Do not remain seated. If you have a pain in your hand or your hand feels numb, Dr. Suarez, it's really scary. Some days I feel that my hand is gone. My hand is gone completely numb. Come forward now in the name of Jesus. Really quickly in the name of our Lord. I like it when God uses me. I like it when people are blessed through me. Come up here now in the name of Jesus. When I say later, don't come forward, please don't come, okay? Because some people are hesitating and they will never come. So those who are standing, please come forward. The others who are not standing now, some other time. No, I want everybody looking at me. Look up here, please. Pay attention now. The Lord God was always by the side of Jacob. Do you have a promise from God? The Lord is by your side. I'm going to pray now. When I am finished praying, you have to believe. And if you believe, you will be able to do that which you were not able to do before. Whatever is wrong right now will go away in the name of Jesus. Amen? Bow your heads and close your eyes, and those at home do the same thing. God blesses us. God, please bless those people who have a problem with their shoulders, whoever broke their collarbone and never went back to what it was before, who fell from a horse, had a car accident, fell down the stairs, got hurt while playing soccer, diving into a river, I don't know what else, Lord, but this person needs a miracle right now. I am going to use the power that you have given me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all action of the devil in all these people's arms. And I ordain right now, devil, it's over. Take everything that is yours, those who are here and those who are watching me on television. All evil is paralyzed right now. And as a minister of the Word of God, I ordain at this very moment, take your evil, go away, and never come back in the name of Jesus. And you say, thank you, Lord. Do you believe? Look at me. Do you believe? Then please raise both your arms like this without any fear. Now clap your hands. Look how beautiful, brethren. Almost 100% here, folks. Dr. Suarez, it really hurt when I raised my arms. I had a very serious problem. Who couldn't raise one of their arms by any means? Please raise your hand. I've just managed to raise my arm now. What was the problem with your arm, sister? I was in an accident. Uh, I was a nanny. Then I tripped and How fell. long ago? It's been about two years two or years. so. What two What exactly years. was the problem? I was unable to raise this arm. It hurt a lot from the shoulder to my hand. But now I you're fell. able to lift it up? I'm healed in the name of How Jesus. How high could you raise I'm your arm fine. with no pain? Well, I couldn't even push it back like this. You couldn't this, push you know, it back? And now you're free of pain? Yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Folks, don't sit down yet because God is still healing. I want to hear everyone's testimonial. What was your problem, sister? I had a strong pain in my arm. My shoulder would How hurt, high could you raise I it with no move. pain? I couldn't move it at all. Now I can move it. Look. Now, but how long ago uh, did the pain start? Now I can start? twist it and turn it, raise it, bend it. It's healed. How long Come ago on. did the pain start? I think almost a year ago. And you can move your arm yes. now? Yes. Oh, glory to God. How beautiful. You, brother, tell me what happened. Dr. Suarez, my name is Nivaldo. I was healed of my arm because one month ago I went to the orthopedist, but the problem persisted. Also, I was feeling pain in my chest, but during the prayer, I felt something like a fire burning and it's all gone now. Now I can raise both my arms. So you couldn't Thank raise either of your no, arms? It was this one here. How high could you raise it? I could raise it like And you're this. okay now. Now I'm fine. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Who else? What about you, brother? My name is Jelson. You see this here? 
The Lord God has completely healed me. What you was see? the problem with your hand? I couldn't close my hand, but now I can close it. You and couldn't I didn't, close it. I didn't used to believe in the word of God. I would go from church to church, but then I came here and I participated in a seven-week crusade, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now you're healed. And now I'm getting baptized. And you're going to get baptized. Now I'm healed. Hallelujah. What about you, sister? I uh, uh, had uh, tendinitis in my elbow, so I could raise my arm only up to here, but not now. I can lift How it How long have you had up. this problem? About six months. Oh, isn't Amen. Jesus wonderful, folks? I won't be able to hear anymore because our time is up. But those of you who were healed just now, raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Your blessing has been confirmed. You may go back to your seats. Our God is awesome. Amen, Jesus. My brethren, whenever you receive a promise from God, you are receiving the presence of God in your life forever. Never let go of this promise. Now you have the Lord God with you, and he is committed to you. We saw today that Jacob wrestled with God. Of course, Jacob didn't have enough strength to prevail over him. He was only human, but God was in Jacob's hands. The promise to which he clung gave him strength to become victorious. The word of God will give you strength too. And it's with this strength that you will fight. The word of God will never abandon you, even if you have fallen into sin. You shouldn't have sinned, but now repent them, ask the Lord for forgiveness, forget your failure, and God will be with you. I'd like to bless all of you at home and also all of you who are here. Today is a day of blessings. The same way God has healed so many arms, he is ready to heal your legs, he is ready to heal your mind and your thoughts, and he is ready to heal whatever needs healing. God, it's in the name of Jesus that I come into your presence to ask you to bless these people. God, thank you. Thank you for giving us your promise. And we know that you are by our side 24 hours per day, seven days per week. God, help this person make the prayer of faith because now this person is your servant, Lord. And I'm going to bless them all now. As a minister of the Word of God, I paralyze all action of the devil in every one of these lives, and I command now evil, go away. Leave in the name of Jesus. And you say with me, thank you, Lord.